Hi, it's Paris from Epic Reviews and Tech Channel, and hello to my fellow boinkers and crunchers. And if you don't know who those people are, it's people who have been volunteering their spare computer power to science and medical research projects, trying to find cures for diseases and new discoveries. Basically, this started a decade or so ago where um, University of California in Berkeley came up with a program, a little program you could download onto your computer, and they basically made arrangements with groups that needed to do research that were heavily computational. Basically, they could have really used a supercomputer at their disposal to do all of the analysis, but they didn't have $20 million to buy one. So Berkeley would let them uh, bring their project in with tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of computers dedicating their spare cycles to that research project. The researchers, maybe in just a few months, could have an answer to their question, and if it was something like a new compound to treat cancer, it may have been your computer that actually made the discovery. So it's a pretty cool thing all the way around. It works out for the researchers who don't have the money for the supercomputer, works out for the average person to be part of very exciting scientific research projects, and it doesn't really cost you anything, maybe a little extra electricity for when you leave your computer running to work on the project. So if you haven't joined the Boink project and at least one of the uh, research projects that they're doing, I really strongly encourage you go take a look. Just go to Google and type in Boink, B-O-I-N-C, and click on the Choose Projects and you can look down the list. It's got to be something there that matters to you, whether it's the SETI project looking for signals in space that might indicate civilization out there, or a cure for disease, cancer, muscular dystrophy. Uh, climate change, global warming predictions and computations. So take a look and sign up. Now the issue that they're having is people have traditionally done this on their computers and computers are going away. So the base of uh, computers that run this project, the desktop computers, I think is decreasing now as people switch to using their phones for everything or their tablets. So they decided wisely to write an app that will allow you to do this sort of uh, donation and research and computation on your phone and on your tablet. Now the average phone has about 25% of the computational power of the average desktop computer, but the phones are really improving quickly and they seem to uh, double in their computational ability about every two years and quad core CPUs are coming out now for phones, so I wouldn't let that discourage you. That does, though, bring up the next question that you're probably thinking, which is, if, these, um, if this app and these projects require so much power, how long is my phone battery going to last? It probably lasts barely a day now. Well, you don't have to worry about that. By default, the uh, app is set to only run when your phone is plugged in and charging and the battery is at 90% or higher. So they understand that would be a concern. The next question that comes up is, um, if I'm paying for my data, how much data is this going to use? How much is this going to cost me? It's also by default set to only uh, do the data transfer to go out and get the bits of data and to upload the results when you're on Wi-Fi. So shouldn't cost you anything. I'm thinking that most of the work will get done. Since most people have their phone on them during the day, the app won't be running. But I'm guessing you charge your phone at night, so you either plug it in somewhere in the bedroom or you maybe you have a little bedside dock that you slide the phone into. Well, at that time, it will take over. The app will start running and doing the research, so it should be able to get a good 10, 12 hours of research done every day. Now about the app, it's free. You can get it on the Google Play Store. Um, it'll work on Android phones, smartphones obviously only, Android version 2.3 and newer. So the older phones just aren't going to make the cut. Also, you can download it from the, um, the Amazon App Store. They will, this uh, app will work on the Amazon Kindle Fire. Other folks like iPhone and iPad users, well, they don't have it yet for you, maybe in the future, because I'm sure they'd like to have the largest base of uh, devices running it so they can provide the most computational ability to all those research projects. But let me show you um, what it looks like when you go to the App Store, how to install it, and what it looks like when it runs. Okay, so we're going to search in the Google Play Store for Boink, B-O-I-N-C. And the one you're going to want is the one that's from Space Science Laboratory. General screenshot. It's um, been downloaded not so many times. I'm hoping that's going to improve, but it did just come out. 4.6 out of 5 for the average, so it's uh, rated pretty highly. It's apparently not causing problems on people's computers, so that's pretty good. It's a fairly small download as well. does need to be able to go online to download those work units and to upload the results. 
Now if you already have an account that you've been using on your computer, you'll be able to enter that here, otherwise you will have to set up an account with Boink and uh, then sign up for the projects you're interested in. There are um, only six projects available that work with the app right now, whereas there are, I don't know, 30 to 50 um, if you get the desktop application of this. The one I particularly like is the World Community Grid. It does work with um, clean water, poverty, disease cures, and so forth. And I'm going to sign in with my existing login and password. So I logged into my World Community Grid account. Only took 20 minutes because I couldn't figure out. It kept telling me it was unable to uh, verify and log in. Turns out you have to be on Wi-Fi at this point to, uh, if you have an existing World Community Grid account, to be able to log into it. It won't log in if you're um, on your data plan. Strange, but that's how it is. Um, right now you can see it says that it basically because it is not plugged in, it is not running. Um, I'll plug it in here in a minute and show you that. Now there's um, only one project within World Community Grid right now that uh, works with uh, phones and that's um, World, A World AIDS Project. So I'll have to sign up for that one. No tasks running. No transfers going on. And then here are the options to auto start. So when the phone starts it basically starts up. I'll let you know when it's suspended. Here's the transfer only on Wi-Fi. Now you can deselect that if you don't mind them using your uh, data from your phone plan to transfer and also compute on battery of course is deselected. If you select it, it will run even when you're on battery. I, I don't want to experiment and find out how fast the battery runs out. I imagine at full speed it, might, it would use up the battery in an hour or two would be my guess. Let me plug it into the power now and then we'll see what our options are. Okay, I let the phone charge up to 99% and since I was already attached to the project of World Community Grid, it downloaded some work units for the fight aids at home. And you can see it has some in advance. It's anticipating not taking too long to do each one. And then when it gets them finished, it will send the results back to the server. And so let's say my phone is running the work units. It's charging at night, in the morning. I pull the plug out to go. And there we go, suspended. It won't run again or use any of my battery until the phone is plugged in again. So that's the Boink app. It seems to be running fine on the phone, having no effect now that it's suspended itself. As soon as I unplug the power, it, it doesn't do anything more on the phone. And then tonight when I'm going to charge the phone up and I plug it in, when the battery level gets up to 90%, it'll kick in and start doing those work units and sending the results out. So it's kind of nice that, to know that's going on in the background. If you're at all interested in it, I'd strongly encourage you to uh, go and get the Boink app and give it a try. It's free. It costs you very little, I think, in the way of electricity to have the app run in the background. And to some people in need, it can make a very big difference. Also to some people waiting for a cure.